שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים. Who among us has not been in a situation where he asks himself, what is God's will for my life? What am I to do? I want to talk to you about the guidance we receive from our Heavenly Father. Guidance that is so important in these days when today and these days will give us even more hardships in the future. All the phenomena that we see, our lives are changing all at once, our routine. We're in the midst of the story of the corona with the lockdown and limitations. There's a lot of uncertainty. What will happen and how will it happen? Think about our financial income, about gatherings as a congregation, how we meet as a family, all kinds of things we're used to, celebrating holidays. All these things change very quickly. And it doesn't seem like it's going to pass uh, very quickly, anytime soon. In any case, in situations like these, we turn our eyes to the Lord and to the heaven. This is good, and this is what we need to do. This is also the goal of this, to awaken us and to look up to the heaven. To heaven. As we are... Um, a few days after the Passover holiday, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, I want to go back and look at this story because we have a lot to learn from this story of the exodus out of Egypt. As we have mentioned a few times in the past, the story of the exodus of the people of Israel out of Egypt is a picture of the life journey that each and every one of us goes through. I look at the, this comparison in Romans chapter 6. It says that whoever sins is a slave to sin. The people of Israel were slaves to Egypt and we were slaves to sin before we repented and gave our lives to God. And they exited. It says in Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 1 and onward that they were baptized in the crossing of the Red Sea and by the cloud, we too are all baptized by water and by spirit. There's also a baptism of fire, but that is a topic for another time. So we have this comparison. And I jump forward to Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, and there again, the lives of our lives are compared to their lives, and there's a calling not to miss like they did. They had enough faith to leave Egypt, but they did not have enough faith to enter the land of Canaan. And this refers also to all of us. We have faith we received when we accepted Jesus, and we said, Jesus, I'm following you, I'm giving you my life, I'm getting baptized. And we start the journey of life. But do we also have enough faith to pass the whole journey, all the way, to start right, to continue, and to persist? and to finish victorious. And this is a challenge, this is a calling for each and every one of us, and that we don't miss it, but that we enter our rest, the eternal rest in heaven, in the heavenly Jerusalem. So we have this comparison, but they, the people of Israel, when they walked in the desert, they had an advantage and they had the great pillar that walked before them. It didn't just walk before them, but it also covered them. It says in Psalms that God covered them with a cloud. So it also gave them shade. It gave them shade in the hot desert. God cares for His people and gives them shade. But beyond giving them shade, it showed them the way and it illuminated the path by night such, they, such that they could walk also by day and also by night. And what is this comparison to our life? I've mentioned in the previous videos in Hebrews, the letter that talks so much about what happened there in the desert. We find the idea of the pillar of cloud in chapter 12. 
He has written about a great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. And the context here is that we need to run the race with patience, just like they walked after the cloud until they finally entered the land of Canaan. And we've already discussed that the pillar of cloud resembles all the life stories of the heroes of the faith that appear in chapter 11. And we find the, the, their full story in the Word of God. So the pillar of cloud, if we want to see these testimonies, and primarily Yeshua, he is our teacher, and we want to follow after their and his examples, then we need to turn to the Word of God, to the written Word of God. And then we also have the pillar of fire that was in the night. We have discussed that the pillar of cloud is a picture of the Word of God, the pillar of fire is a picture of the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit descended upon the 120 disciples in, in, it descended in tongues of fire. We read in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I choose to read these verses as a reminder. When the day of Pentecost had come, they had all gathered together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and they appeared on them as tongues of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each and every one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. So we have the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire, we have the written word of God and the Holy Spirit. And both these things come together. Just like the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire were the same pillar by day, it was a cloud and a fire by night. In the same way, the word of God and the Holy Spirit are entwined and connected. Now I want to establish this. We read in 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, the following words. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in, right, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for all good work. So, all scripture is written by the Spirit of God. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is the author of all the scriptures that we hold in our hands. Well, we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, and verse 20 and 21, we read, But we know... So, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. But we know, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit who spoke for, from God. So again, what is written by the prophets was written in the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. The relationship between the Scripture and the Holy, the Holy Spirit is the same as the relationship between the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. Just as these two things, the pillar of cloud and the fire, guided the people of Israel in their way to the land of Canaan, likewise also the word of God, we read in Psalms, chapter 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. The word of God is a candle. It lights the way for us, the way of life. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And in John 14, 26, we see the relationship between the word of God and the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring to you the remembrance all that I said unto you. The Holy Spirit reminds us what Jesus taught us, the living word of God that descended from heaven, 
the Word of God and the Holy Spirit together. In the next message, we will look at the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit teaches us in the Word of God. Earlier, we spoke about Moses as an example for a cloud that we can learn from his life. In the next message, I want to talk about the pillar of fire, about the Holy Spirit. What does it teach us? How does it guide us on the path which we tread today? We want to know this because we want to arrive in peace to our Father in Heaven. May we meet again soon. May the Lord bless you. Shalom.